What's up, everybody? Doran Aldana here coming at you with another kick-ass episode of the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. And today we're going to talk about how to harness the power of leverage to propel you to the next level. Leverage. It's an interesting word, is it not? It's getting more with less. Leverage. I liken it to if you pound a nail into a two by four, and you try and pull that nail out with your bare hands, how easy do you think that would be to pull it out with your bare hands? Not very easy, right? Chances are you're going to get bloody hands before you ever even get remotely close to getting that nail out of the board. I liken it to if you're going to the gunfight, you don't want to be wielding the butter knife. You want to be rolling out the tanks. That's leverage. I liken it to if you're going to build the foundation for a skyscraper, if you're digging that hole for the foundation, you want to be digging with the excavator, not the shovel. That's leverage. Leverage is getting more results with less time, energy, money, and stress. And right now, we could use some more leverage, could we not? I mean, it's been two years now of grinding up the hill with concrete blocks on our feet when it comes to market conditions, when it comes to congenial fair weather in the mortgage space, it has certainly not been fair weather for the last two years. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? We've had rising rates, inflation, hyper competition, margin compression, everyone and their dog chasing after the same realtors. So it has been tough trudging for the last couple of years in the mortgage space. I don't need to tell you that. You know that with your feet in the street every single day and having that wind in your face instead of on your back. It is not an easy thing to grind through the resistance, but with the power of leverage, you can still win. You don't have to wait and hold your breath for fair weather. You don't have to wait and hold your breath for better rates, for rate cuts to win. You can win while you wait. You can win in any market, not just the fair weather market. And that's my goal for you. That's my prayer. And my wish for you is that you would find leverage in your business such that you're not holding your breath. You're winning while you wait. You're winning while you wait for things outside of your control. You are in the driver's seat, taking control of the things you can control, like your mindset, like what you're saying to yourself, like your emotional state, your emotional home like your daily disciplines, your daily routines and habits, like your ability to do the things that still allow you to bring in quality business on a consistent basis, building a dream team of top producing realtors that you love and adore, they love and adore you. You have synergy, you have chemistry, sparks flying, they're energy builders, not battery drainers. You have the ability to do things that allow you to be Seat, even though there's so many things you don't have control over. And that's why the conversation of leverage is so potent and powerful because when you're in the driver's seat, do you want to be stuck in first gear half throttle? Or do you want to be able to tap the fullness of the power of the engine that's propelling you? Do you want to be able to tap all six gears full throttle and really max out the RPM? If you do, then this conversation is for you because today we're going to talk about how to hack yourself into higher leverage in your business. So you can get more results with less time, energy, money, and stress. And frankly, we could have a completely equally as important and equally as long and certainly equally as vital conversation around all the ways we can lose leverage, all the ways that we zap our battery, all the ways that we can dampen our light and leak leverage. But for the sake of brevity, we're going to talk about ways to boost leverage. I call them leverage hacks. So today, without further ado, let's get to it and do it. Let's dive into the first leverage hack of the day. And that is leverage hack number one, focus on referrals not crappy internet leads. Not all lead sources were created equal. If you've been in the business for more than a day, you know that to be true. There are so many different ways to get leads, but not, not all of those leads are qualified. Not all those leads have the funds and the means to do business now. Not all those leads have the credit or the down payment or the financial wherewithal 
to do a transaction. Not all those leads are even interested in talking with you. Not all those leads even pick up the phone. Not all those leads see you as a credible source and authority as a mortgage expert. So notice all those different factors determine how quality that lead is. Do they see you as credible? Do they see you as an authority? Do they trust you? Do they respect you? Are they ready to do business? Are they qualified to do business? Do they have the financial means and wherewithal to do business? All those things help to determine how qualified and how quality the lead is. And the question then is, how can you get leverage with the quality of the leads you have? Well, simple answer, get quality leads that come from quality sources, such as referrals, referrals from clients, referrals from referral partners like top producing realtors. So focusing on quality referrals and building a referral based business is a leverage hack because it allows you to get more deals closed with less time, energy, money, and stress, right? If you're going to close a deal, you can spend 20 hours and have a whole lot blood, sweat, and tears, and drama, and trauma, trying to resurrect the dead and trying to be a mortgage magician to get that deal done and all the stress and the sleepless nights that comes with it. Or you can have a quality borrower who has their ducks in a row, all the documentation nailed down, organized in a file folder, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, slam dunk. It's like, you know, taking candy from a baby, right? It's like a hot through butter and you're getting usually a higher commission per deal on that kind of client than you are on the really tough deals. Now, if you're charging uh, a fee to get a deal done because it's uh, a difficult deal that the average broker can't do, then by all means, maybe you're getting paid a little more for the deal, but are you getting paid more per hour of your time? And is it battery draining or is battery zapping. You see, if you just look at, oh, I'm making 6K per deal on a challenging deal that the average broker or LO can't do rather than 3K on a conventional deal. Well, yeah, you're making double, but how much is that zapping you? How many sleepless nights are you suffering? How much stress is dampening your light? And what does that work out to in terms of earnings per hour? You be making the same or less earnings per hour, but it's causing you so much strife and stress and suffering that it's really not worth it. But if you settle for that and you'll take any borrower who has a pulse who could fog a mirror and you perpetuate that by building your reputation as the loan resurrection specialist, where your referral partners just dish you the tough deals that their preferred lender isn't willing to do or can't do, well, then you're stuck with that. And then if you allow it, if you tolerate it, then you are allowing it to persist. You're actually perpetuating the problem, the very problem that perhaps you're grumbling about at the end of the day and after a sleepless night because it's causing you so much stress. So leverage hack number one is focusing on quality referrals because it makes your life so much easier. It's like a hot knife through butter. They're already pre-sold on you before they even talk to you. The average commission per deal is higher they're compliant. They pay deference to your leadership. They're usually more grateful. They usually are more likely to give you a five-star review at the end of the deal. They're more likely to refer you to other friends and family. And it becomes this endless chain of awesome where an awesome deal from an awesome client begets another awesome deal from another awesome client. It's this endless change of exchange and chain of awesome because you have quality referral that begets more quality referrals. No much, notice how much more leverage there is in that versus the tough deals or the crappy internet leads where you have to sift through a mountain of gravel just to find a few gold nuggets, right? That's doing it the hard way. That's the shovel versus the excavator. Why settle for the shovel when you know there's something called an excavator, right? There's no brownie points at the bank for doing it the hard way. So why not take the smart way versus the hard way? Leverage hack number two is focus on top dog realtors, 
not the bottom feeders, not the whining, sniveling, complaining, jelly donut eating bottom feeders who are driving Uber right now because they were, were already on wobbly knees before rates started to go up. But as soon as rates went up, they're the first and most affected versus least and last. They're the ones who are selling solar, driving Uber, going to get a job because they can't pay the bills on 100% commission when you're only closing three deals a year, right? That doesn't cut it. So we want to go after, as my buddy Frank Garay says, the career agents, the career realtors, the successful ones who are doing 15 plus buyer sides a year, the ones that are taking market share in a tumultuous and challenging market while their competition is dropping like flies. And so that gives you leverage because you could go after financial planners, accountants, you can go after the bottom feeding, struggling, struggle bus realtors. You can go after all a matter of different referral categories and referral sources. The question is, which category has the power to send you the most amount of business most often? Obviously, the answer is top producing realtors, right? They're the ones who have the capacity to send you one, two, three deals a month versus one, two, three deals a year. Which one do you think has more leverage? Obviously, the one that has a higher capacity to send you more business more often. In. And anytime you're working with referral partners, there's a certain degree of a re of relationship that you need to invest in, a certain amount of responsibility to maintain that relationship. And they're going to have questions, concerns. There's going to be a requirement on you to follow up on those questions and concerns. So all those relationships require maintenance. They, be, they require watering and fertilizing and tilling the soil and pruning and all of that is an investment from you. So would you rather invest in something that gives you an abundant harvest, an abundance of return on your investment of time, energy, and money when it comes to a fruitful harvest of that investment and from that investment? Or would you rather pour all this blood, sweat, and tears and sacrifice into a plant that has meager returns? that has a rather lackluster harvest? The answer is obvious. So you can see the contrast in leverage between those two pictures, the plant that maybe has one shriveled up, dried up fruit on it versus the plant that is abundant. It's got a bumper crop of fruit on it and it's like bounty, beautiful, luscious, abundant bounty. Leverage is what gives you that bounty. So top producing realtors. Now you might be thinking though, Doran, top producers are hard to get. They're prima donnas. They think their poop, their poop don't stink. They think they walk on water. They think they have their act together. They already have their current lender. They're already married to their current lender. How do I get my foot in the door? They slam the door in my face on my nose before I even can get a word out edgewise. I get the idea, Dorn, but how do I get these top producers on board? Not easy to attract. And that is a symptom of the fact that there's probably one or two or three key missing components in your approach. And so you might have the Ferrari, you might have the engine, you might have the wheels, but if you don't have the spark plug, it's not going to drive. You're not going to be able to power the engine because the engine won't start. So chances are there's a maybe at least a spark plug missing in your approach. And that's a big reason why smart and ambitious growth minded mortgage pros hire us is because it's hard to see the label when you're inside the bottle. It's hard to identify exactly what's causing the problem when you're not a trained mechanic. So they come to us because we're trained mechanics when it comes to mortgage marketing. We've been doing this for almost two decades. It's not our first rodeo. So we can tell very quickly just from a few diagnostic questions, where your marketing engine's losing steam and why it feels like you're grinding up a mountain with concrete blocks on your feet, doing it the hard way, because there's just a key piece missing. And it's not just about knowing what to do. It's also about knowing what is missing such that you're losing leverage. So keep in mind that if you don't have success or you haven't had success with top producing realtors, it, and you don't like going after them because they're not giving you the time of day. It's kind of like saying, I don't like sex. You're probably doing it wrong. There's probably something missing in your approach. And that's certainly something we can help you with.
I'm going to give you an opportunity to book a call with us free, no obligation, no strings attached, where we can illuminate your situation and help you get clarity like never before. If you're missing the necessary clarity, you feel like you need to determine and discern what exactly is causing you to spin your wheels on the tarmac. We can help you with that. In the meantime, in between time, let's continue with our leverage hacks, shall we? The next leverage hack is leverage hack number three. Be a go-giver, not just a go-getter. Be a go-giver, not just a go-getter. So what do, I mean, what do I mean by that? Well, being a go-giver obviously is about giving. It's about coming with value. Being a go-getter is I need business. I need referrals. I need leads. So I'm going to go get them from somebody. Notice the difference. There's a taking energy versus a giving energy. And when it comes to enacting the law of reciprocity, which is a very powerful law, just like the law of gravity, the law of lift, there's so many laws in this universe. The law of reciprocity is a law that's at play in human behavior and human interactions. And when you're coming to take versus coming to give, when you go to get from somebody versus go to give to somebody, it's a very different energy. It's the difference between gleaning and taking from your garden versus investing in your garden, watering your garden, sowing into your garden, nurturing your garden, fertilizing your garden, right? If all you do is take, 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 take from the land and you don't give back, your land is going to become depleted and it's going to be barren and it's not going to produce fruit. So when it comes to your approach to generating business, especially referrals, you want be able to find ways to be in relationship with people where they have an impression of value, every interaction with you, where when they're in conversation with you, it's like, wow, every time you reach out to me, you're bringing value. Every time you reach out to me, I'm feeling grateful because you keep blessing my life. You keep bringing light and leadership and love and leverage into my life that makes my life better. How is that you keep making me want to reciprocate and give you more value back because you keep giving me value first. Every time I talk with you, I want to just bless you because you first blessed me. It reminds me of a powerful verse from Proverbs. It says, he who waters is himself watered. So when you're a waterer and you're a go giver and you're bringing value through every interaction, you can't help but be watered because you're watering first. It's that investment of seed, quality seed into the garden that bears an abundant harvest. So leverage is about having not only a focus on referrals, not only focusing on top producing realtors, but it's about your mindset. It's about your posture and your motives and your method such that it's received in seeing you as a go-giver versus a go-getter, seeing you as a welcome guest versus an annoying pest. Notice how that gives you leverage. That's going to open so many more doors for you. If you'll come with a, I'm bringing you something of value versus I'm looking to get something of a value from you. Notice how much more receptive people are going to be, how open they're going to be how eager and motivated they will be to your overture to hearing you out when you have the all cheese, no whiskers approach, as I like to call it. It's kind of like these realtors are like mice and they love cheese because cheese is yummy and tasty. They hate whiskers because they know whiskers are attached to something that wants to eat them from breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's called a cat. So you want to have an all cheese, no whiskers approach. And that's really at the heart of what it means to be a go giver versus a go getter. So that's leverage hack. Number three, be the go giver. That's how you become the welcome guest versus the annoying pest. Leverage number leverage hack. Number four is go narrow, deep and rich with a few versus shallow, skimpy and wide with many. Go narrow, deep, and rich with just a few top producing realtors such that you're able to really touch and change lives. 
you're not just skipping along the surface and having an anemic connection. You're having a deep connection. You're not just getting their mind share, you're getting their heart share. And when you get their mind share and their heart share by going deep and having deeply rooted heart connection with them, it's just a matter of time until you get their referral share. So it starts with mind share, then heart share, then referral share. And to do that, you need to go deep. You need to invest in them. You need to invest in them consistently on the weekly or biweekly. We call those what's next meetings. When you bring on a new partner, we call them VIP partners here on Planet Prosper. Your job is not done. It's just begun. Now you want to continue to invest in that relationship because when you identify their pain points, challenges, where their money is being left on the table, where they're leaving meat on the bone, juice in the fruit, and you're identifying their friction points, their pain points, what's keeping them up at night, what's causing them to be frustrated in their business, and you help them to uncover that and you illuminate that through powerful, intelligent, strategic questions through a diagnostic process that we here on Planet Prosper called the discovery meeting, you're able to now help them to uncover and illuminate the very thing that's causing them to be stifled or stuck. You're identifying where the constraint is, the bottleneck is in their business. And that's incredibly illuminating just by simply asking quality questions. You're filling the room with light and the light casts out the darkness of uh, complacency, the darkness of tolerating something that they just keep telling themselves a story. Oh, it's going to get better. Oh, eventually I'll get to it. If only there was enough time in the day, maybe they are sugarcoating it and saying, you know, it's not so bad. I'm doing pretty well. I'm doing better than most. And so they're tolerating it. And what we tolerate persists. What we enable, we tolerate. And what we tolerate persists. So by asking these powerful, illuminating questions in this diagnostic process, you're able to uncover that, which is value in and of itself. It's called clarity. Clarity is power. And until and unless they buy the problem, they will not buy your solution. Let me say that again. Until and unless they buy the problem, the problem that they're struggling with in their business, with clarity and with your clarity inducing questions with caring and compassion, right? It's not enough for them to know the truth. They need to also feel compassion such that they're willing to step into the light of truth because without that, they will not feel safe to open up. So you have to get this compassionate frame such that they feel safe enough to open up and to step into the light of truth because they feel heard. They feel known. There's no judgment. It's a safe place. And then once they've stepped into the light of truth and they've gotten real with the problem, now they're going to be chomping at the bit to have you help them solve it because they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? So before we direct, we have to connect. And so it's this connection of clarity and caring and compassion that allows them now to be in a place where they open up, they get real, they step into the light of truth, because until and unless we face the problem, we're not going to do what it takes to solve the problem. So you're becoming an agent of light, an agent of luminancy. I don't know if that's the word, but if it isn't, it is now. We'll call it Dornies. You're an agent who brings illumination into their life to shine the light of truth, to identify the problem. And now they're going to be chopping at the bit to want your solution. And now your job is to go deep in providing those solutions. It doesn't have to be a lot of things. It needs to be things that bring leverage into their business. It might be resurrecting dead leads into half of what you got resurrected and motivated buyers. It might be going from dinosaur method from the dark ages with pen and paper at their open houses to using 21st century technology like a QR code that links to a CRM that has automated follow-up with text messaging. It might be helping them get a Google My Business account and having a review campaign baked into their post-closing such that every single time they do a closing, they're getting an ask out by text asking for a review on Google and going back to all the people in the past they've done business with and asking for 
review and then asking those people who gave a review for a referral because think about it who better to send you a referral than somebody who just gave you a five-star review that's the best source of referrals ever you're happy clients right so notice all of those things are a value but if you come to them straight out the gate with those offerings they're going to be like i already have that i already know that i've already done that my brokerage already offers that i don't need that and so it's going to be much whiskers in the space. It's going to scare them away. We need to have an all cheese, no whiskers approach. And again, that's not an easy code to crack, which again is a big reason why smart, ambitious, growth-minded mortgage pros hire us is to learn the secret sauce on how to frame that overture by email, by text, by phone, how to overcome objections, how to dismantle and sidestep the buyer defense mechanisms, the smoke screens, and the common objections that most loan officers and mortgage brokers will face they're reaching out to realtors. Regardless of how compelling your value proposition, you need to know how to overcome those and you need to know how to make your initial frame, your initial overture, or they're not going to give you the time of day, right? So that's enough about that. Let's move on to hack number five now. And that is ask for five-star Google reviews and then ask for referrals, not just hoping for reviews, not just hoping for referrals, but actually doing the asking, doing the asking of, hey, how did we do? Give us a review. It only takes a minute or two, but it would mean the world to us. Thank you in advance for your review. And then when you get the review, thank you so much for the, the five-star review. If I could press the repeat button on you, I do it all day long. You've been such a delight and a joy to work with. If you'd be so kind, I'd love to have a quick conversation to see if maybe we could do a little brainstorm session to activate your mental Rolodex to see who in your world we can also help. Chances are there's other people in your world we can help. And since sharing is caring, I thought it would be a great opportunity for us to help others that you care about in your world by doing a little brainstorm session. Did you have a brief moment? Would you be open to that? Awesome. And then you go through the, diff the different categories in the, their mental Rolodex from their church group to their soccer club to people at their work and the different categories, like people who are renting that have a great income, but they're still making their landlord rich. Let's help those people learn how to build generational wealth, build equity in their own home and take that money. And instead of throwing it out the window every month, build equity in their own home, the pride of home ownership, the joy of home ownership. Maybe they know people who are investors and they need access to more capital to build their portfolio faster. Maybe they know people who are thinking about buying or selling. You can refer people who are thinking about selling to your referral partners, your listing agents. Do you think your listing agents might appreciate that? You better believe it. But if you don't ask, you won't get. And if you don't get, you can't give. So you notice how this is a circular, circulating circuitry that allows you to receive and then give. And then as you give, you receive. It's a circuitry. It's a circulation of giving and receiving, but it starts by asking, asking for the referral, asking for the review and be strategic about it. Who better to send you a referral than somebody who just gave you a five-star review. That's your evangelist in the making. That's your brand ambassador in the making. There's no better source of referrals from that. You know that I know that, but if you're not strategic about the asking, you're going to leave all that juice in the fruit, meat on the bone, money on the table. Let your competitors leave that money on the table, but not you. The best way to help the poor is not be one of them. So you might as well take that money, put it in your pocket where it belongs, right? Now, the sixth leverage hack is automate your marketing and operations. Automate your marketing and operations, not relying on dinosaur methods like paper, pen, and Excel spreadsheets, right? That, an Excel spreadsheet's a great start, but you don't want to stop there. Having file folders and pushing physical paper around, that's a great start, but we don't want to stop there. We want to have automation. This is the 21st century. If you can take a little bit of extra time to automate something that you're spending 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes to do every time on a reoccurring basis, and you can maybe spend an hour or two 
to set up a system where it is done on autopilot using your CRM, for example, and then you never have to mess with it again. Notice how much that frees you up. Now you're building a business that sets you free instead of enslaves you. And that's how you're able to make 300, 500,000, even a million dollars plus work in 20, 30, 40 hours a week because you're unleashing the power of leverage using automation and technology. So yes, is it going to take an investment up front to learn the system, to put the pieces of the puzzle of the system in place? Yes. But is it worthwhile to learn, to stretch, to step out of your comfort zone in order to put a system like that in place that sets you free for the rest of your life, for the rest of your career, making freedom money for the rest of your career, having all that extra time to spend enjoying with your family, playing golf, uh, traveling the world, whatever it is that you know tickles your fancy. Well, I'm sure you'd agree the answer is emphatically yes, absolutely. But if you don't see it as a leverage point, if it's not on your radar as a top priority, you're going to keep working in the business versus working on it. And as long as you continue to work in the business versus working on it, you're just spinning your wheels. I can't tell you how much lost opportunity, how much lost freedom, how much amazing juice of life I've missed out on because I've been so in task mode, so task orientated and so myopic, just focusing tunnel vision on like, there's this thing I need to do. So I'm just going to do it because if you want it done right, you got to what? Do it yourself. And I was just so myopic in my thinking. I didn't think about putting policy, procedure, protocol systems in place. I didn't think about creating a playbook where I can delegate it to someone else and have automation and systems doing and undergirding the operations in my business. Because I did think about it, but it just seemed hard. It seemed difficult. It seemed confusing. So I didn't bother learning how to do it. I just, I saw it as this insurmountable mountain and I just went for the path of least resistance, doing it now, getting it done now. I'll think about that later. And then days turn into weeks, weeks turn into months, months turn into years. And it's like, dude, you don't have a real business. You have a glorified job, J-O-B, which, which stands for just over broke, journey on the way to brokenness. That is not an abundant life. That's not leverage. That's having a glorified job, trading time for money. So if you want to have a real business that runs without you, that sets you free, that allows you to have an amazing income with freedom, autonomy, independence, flourishing, thriving, not just surviving, and to free you up so you don't have to be in the minutia doing it all yourself, dealing with loan level issues all day, every day, then that's where systems come in. You need a CRM. You need to have... Uh, someone on your team who's a propeller head who understands Zapier and understands how to connect your different applications, your CRM to a Google sheet. Like for example, a perfect example of this is to have a CRM with a pipeline that manages every stage for, from the initial inquiry to the application to closing for both purchase deals and refinance deals. And every single stage is date stamped onto a Google sheet. So you can see at a glance who's in your pipeline and what stages in the pipeline for each client, for each prospect have been date stamped and which ones have not yet been date stamped. So you can see at a glance where everyone is, who's canceled, who's still in process, who is forthcoming, set to close in the pipeline. You can see all of it at a glance in a Google sheet because your CRM is talking with your Google sheet. Well, you be able to do that if you're trying to figure out all that yourself and you're not techie but did you know you can hire tech people for like five bucks an hour out of the philippines to do that kind of stuff 10 bucks an hour 15 bucks an hour my guy i pay 30 bucks an hour because he's super yoda smart and he just is so thorough he does excellence for excellence sake it just makes sense for me to delegate and pay a little bit more to delegate to a rock star because i have a lot of this type of stuff that i get done on the daily and weekly but just notice how Having automation, having a pipeline, and having a CRM that is automating all the communications with the client, all the communications with the, uh, the agents, automating all the communications with your team in terms of who needs to be tasked when with what, with instructions. It's so powerful, right? Which leads to the last and final, last but certainly not least, leverage hack. And that is 
Leverage hack number seven, delegate the minutia so you can focus on rainmaking instead of paper pushing. Delegate the minutia so you can focus on rainmaking instead of paper pushing. So we talked about that, right? In order to delegate, you really do need a CRM. You want to have a CRM because when you hit certain pipelines, whether it be an operations pipeline from the initial inquiry to the, you know, the initial phone consult to the application to uh, having something go under contract to all the documentation required to closing the deal and so on and so forth to asking for the review and asking for the referrals. That's all the operations pipeline, but you can also have pipelines for, you know, the initial stage, even before you talk to somebody. So they're reaching out. Now the pipeline is okay. We need to get on the phone. We need to have that initial discovery meeting. And so there's marketing pipelines and there's operations fulfillment pipelines. And every pipeline has stages where it's step one, step two, step three, and step four and so on. And you're moving towards the goal of getting them over the finish line to closing, which isn't the finish line. That's just the start line. You want to have ongoing conversation, ongoing cultivation of that relationship. So they stick to you like super glue and they send you all their business all the time. And now you're their mortgage professional for life. You're not a one and done. You're not dropping like a hot potato just because you got the deal closed and you earned a commission. You're seeing them as two or three or four or five or 10 commission checks and 10 family served 10 people's lives changed because you did a great job for them and they give you a five-star review. You got new deals in the door because now they're coming to you through Google for free because you have an amazing stack of awesome with your five-star reputation online. You're getting those pre-sold, pre-cooked, pre-tenderized, hot for what you got leads, the best quality online leads you can ever have straight from Google, hot for what you got. Plus you're getting the endless chain of awesome with repeat and referral business from those clients. So you can see one deal can now all of a sudden become 10 deals, all just because you've got systems in place that automate the process of following up. Now you might be confused or overwhelmed by like, how do I do this Dorn? It seems like there's so many things I just don't know. Well, again, that's why smart, ambitious growth minded mortgage pros hire us at mortgage marketing coach.com. Cause we have all these campaigns, plug and play turnkey. We know how to set up Zapier integrations. We know how to get, you know, top notch talent off Upwork, for example, so that you can get vetted quality virtual assistants, graphic designers, video editors, uh, Zapier experts, et cetera, et cetera, from all over the world using Upwork.com. And we also use an amazing tool called Loom.com. Loom dot com is an awesome tool for creating video demos and they're particularly awesome if you want to leverage your time and you don't want to have to retrain people you don't want to have to continue to tell people over and over live face to face belly to belly do this do that instead you create a playbook for every stage in your operations pipeline and every stage in your marketing pipeline and every stage has instructions for delegation, chances are, or most stages probably do. So rather than having to rehash it and just be exhausted and exasperated by having to tell people over and over, and over the same thing over and over and over again, or if you lose someone and maybe they go to some other career path or they get poached by a competitor or whatever the case may be, you have to retrain all over again. It's exhausting. I'm exhausted even just talking about it, right? It's so exhausting, but what if you created a playbook for every task or set of tasks within a sp particular stage in your pipeline and your CRM communicated that task with a link to a Google sheet or a Google page, a Google, yeah, it would be a Google sheet. And on that Google, Google document, that's the word Google doc, there's instructions. Step one, do this. Step two, do that. Step three, do this. And the steps are all illuminated and brought to life with a video demo. Well, use loom.com allows you to create those video demos on the fly. Super easy, breezy, lemon squeezy. All you need is a microphone and then you just record using your microphone and your mouse on the screen while you're doing it. So instead of you having to do it 10,000 times and just being exasperated and bored and burnt out because you're doing the same mundane, boring minutia over and over and over again. You just record yourself doing it for the last time. Could you imagine something? Think about something you hate doing in your business. 
that's like, oh no, put a gun to my head. I don't want to do that another freaking one more time. Please, I'd rather die. Stick it under the, my head and pull the trigger. I'm exaggerating, but you get the idea. Something that really zaps you that you hate doing. Got that in your mind? Now imagine doing it for the last time by recording it on Loom using a use Loom video and then delegating it to either a virtual assistant, otherwise known as a marketing assistant, if it's a marketing task, or maybe it's a loan partner or a loan uh, officer assistant or a loan associate or something like that, whatever you want to call it, someone who helps with packaging the deal, finding a home for the loan, collecting docs, processing, whatever the case may be. And instead of you having to do it now, you're training someone else to do it. And they have a playbook with a Google doc with step-by-step -step instructions with maybe checklists of what to do in a specific sequence and then video demos for every step. So if you lose person it ain't no thing like a chicken wing yeah it's a little bit of an inconvenience but you can just onboard a new person you give them the playbook with the loom videos and it's like easy breezy because you have documentation with policy procedure protocol and systems to give to your people so now you're building a systems-based business not a you-based business that's how you build a multi-million dollar mortgage company and you're making millions while you're working to 40 hours a week. That's leverage. Can you see how that's going to give you more of what you want and less of what you don't want? The stress, the overwhelm, the boredom, the minutia, the battery draining, and to be able to just free you up to do what you really love that lights your fire, that gets you fired up every day to do it because it's you dancing in your strengths, you operating in your superpower. If you can see that that's the game and you understand that it's all about leverage, then you've certainly locked in on exactly what I'm trying to communicate today. So if nothing else, and you just got some light in your eyes, some pep in your step, and I ignited that white hot fire burning desire in your heart to unleash leverage, mission accomplished. Check that box. That's exactly what I wanted to accomplish today. But if you're like, Doran, I've got the inspiration, I got the motivation, but now I need the education on how to do it. Like it's one thing to know I need more leverage. It's another thing to have a playbook that's battle tested and proven where I don't have to try and reinvent the wheel. I don't have to go through the pain of trial and error to figure out all these different leverage hacks. If someone else has already hacked that and they already have a playbook, playbook for every one of these leverage hacks, why would I want to grind up the 100-story staircase with a 50-pound backpack when I can just press the P button on the elevator and go straight to making prosperity money and else money? Why do it the hard way, the long way? Very good point. Again, that's why mortgage professionals hire us, is to condense decades into days and to be able to really propel them to next level results by just using the recipe, the formula, the blueprint that's battle tested and proven instead of having to figure it out all on your own. Again, that's doing it the hard way. Leverage, if I was to give you a last and final bonus leverage uh, tip, leverage hack, it would be follow other people's proven recipes. Don't try to create your recipes yourself. Follow other people's recipes that are already battle tested and proven that took a decade or two to develop. And now if you just follow the recipe, you can turn decades into days and literally get results that you would normally have to take a decade or two to accomplish on your own. And now you're able to do it in, you know, three months, five months, six months, eight months. Notice how much leverage that unleashes in your life, right? So that is the ultimate leverage hack is Model other people's proven formulas, recipes, blueprints. Now, if that excites you and you know you don't want to mess around doing it the hard way, you want to go straight to the excavator, you don't want to be messing with the shovel, and you're 100% commission mortgage professional and you're making 70 basis points or higher and you want to add at least an extra $100,000 plus to your annual income in the next 12 months or less, then I invite you to take advantage of a complimentary breakthrough call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. 
Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply, where you'll get on the phone with me or one of my consultants. We'll lift up the hood on your business. We'll ask you some intelligent, quality, strategic questions to illuminate your situation. We're going to identify where you're at, where you want to be, and if we can help you get there. And if we discern and decide that we're 100% certain we can help you, we'll show you what that looks like. If we don't, if for whatever reason don't have the right fit, the right synergy to be able to help you create the breakthrough you're looking for. We'll direct you to something else. We'll recommend you to something else or someone else. But either way, our goal for you on that call is that you leave that call with massive value, massive clarity, and chances are we're going to have some fun along the way. Sound fair? If that sounds fair to you, go ahead and book the call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash apply. So I hope you got some value from this. I didn't just give you seven hacks to leverage. I gave you eight under promise over deliver. That's how champions roll. You're welcome. I trust you did get some illuminating value, some insight. Maybe you got reminded of some things you already knew, but hey, reminding is uh, usually the best form of education. We often need reminding more than we need educating. So if nothing else, I'll remind you on some things you already knew and hopefully brought to light some new things that you hadn't thought of before. So go forth and implement just one or two or three leverage hacks. What are the top three leverage hacks you heard today that excite you the most? Which one are you going to commit to putting to practice in your life, in your business in the next 30 days or less? Are you going to block schedule time in your calendar to get it done? Or are you just going to hope that it gets done? I challenge you to block it in your calendar because when you block it in your calendar, it's usually inevitable, certainly most profitable, probable. but if you're just thinking about it and you don't have it in your calendar, then usually it's one of those things that doesn't happen. So put it in your calendar and go forth one leverage hack at a time and just remind yourself that you are deserving of the excavator. You are deserving of massive success. You are deserving of abundance. You are deserving of being blessed so you can be a blessing. Align yourself with that identity and leverage will come to you from all different sources in divine timing and divine order because your identity is aligned with leverage. It's aligned with fruitfulness. It's aligned with not having to take the 100-story staircase when you have the P button you can press to take you to penthouse money, paradise money, and prosperity money. All right, guys, thanks for hanging with me. My name is Dorn Aldana coming at you from the Art of Mortgage Marketing Podcast. Be blessed, and we'll see you on the next episode. Peace, y'all. Thanks for being with us.